And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Drifting Lands, Devonian Animal Landers. Now, this game sounds like a game full of science. It, it is. This is a game in which you have some continents, you are picking a basic creature, you're trying to move, evolve, and take control of those different continents. Um, you do so by playing cards from your hands, which range from amazing to okay cards, but the cards that you don't play at the end will count towards your points. Let's take a look. In this game, you're going to be playing one of four different groups of creatures. And for lack of the fact that I cannot pronounce any of these names, I'm going to just call them spiders, lungfish, I can pronounce that one, uh, lizards, and uh, centipedes. Now, in the base game, all of them are the same. They each come with a deck of cards that will match them. Pretty much in the base game, everyone has the identical decks. You have a continent here made up of seven pieces. Each continent has land on one side and a mountain on the other. All, even though all these lands look a little bit different here, they're pretty much the same thing. The game's going to take place over four rounds. The first thing you do in a round is you are going to drift a continent. So maybe I want to drift this continent this direction and just... Vroom the whole continent moves. If ever there's a creature that's in the water and you get hit by a continent, guess what? You're, you're removed. Uh, getting hit by a continent, it says you, you cause earthquakes and uh, you know your creature dies or whatever, but uh, you, 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 you got hit by a continent. Anyway, you're gonna be starting with four level ones. Each round of the game, everyone's gonna drift first, so maybe this one drifts this way, this one drifts down a bit, this one drifts over. You can drift. You're always going to drift a continent, and the continents are going to change shape as time goes by. And this is because you're going to pick four cards from your deck. Everyone's going to pick four cards from their deck, and they're going to then play those cards one after another in turn order. So what do the cards do? Well, we have drifting, which is moving a continent one space. Pretty simple. We have ultra drifting, which is the same thing as drifting, except you can move any continent. See, this one only allows you the symbol down here in the corner is if you have some of your creatures on it. Splitting allows you to move part of a continent one space and split it into two parts. And you can't play this on your last turn in the last round at the very end of the game. But I could say, oh, we're going to take this continent that I'm on here and we're going to just split this part off. Vroom. Or if this was a continent, I could just be like, vroom. That's splitting. Ultra splitting is the same thing, but you can do it to a continent that you're not part of. So maybe you have like a big control of a continent, and I'll be like, see ya, this piece just split away from you and is no longer part of your continent. Well, actually, it's still touching, but I'm sure I could find some sort of way to do it. Maybe just move those three out. Now I've just split your continent off. Now, mutating. This is gonna, mutating and evolving. Well, evolving lets you upgrade one of your animals by level one. Mutating lets you upgrade them by level two. They can go all the way up to a level four. So the spider might go to a level two. Let's say he was a one here, now he's a two. Or I could take a two and replace it with a three or go up to a four. Because whoever has the most creatures uh, on a continent at the end of the game is gonna score points for that continent. You can move people, move someone three steps, and when you move, you can even move into water. That's not a problem. You can move up onto the continent from water, but that's going to cost you two steps. And if there's a mountain, another two steps. Migrating lets you move five spaces. Breeding, get some more people out there. Put a level one next to a spot where you already have a creature. Reproducing lets you breed twice. And then this card here lets you basically flip a card to the mountainside and stack it. Any animals on both tiles are removed. So I'd flip one like this. I could say I'm flipping this and poof, goes on top of that one, forming a mountain. And this creature is now removed. So that's what you're doing. You're going to be doing that. You're going to pick four cards. Players are going to play four cards and you'll do the same thing. Everybody picks a continent and drifts it. You play four more cards. And then after the fourth round, everyone's going to score. Now each continent is going to get points based on where the continent is. So let's say this is a continent here. I'm going to look at the stuff underneath it. These are zero, the outer ring, but the middle ring is worth one point. This very middle ring is worth two, and this special space here is worth four. So this continent is worth four, five, six, seven points right now. 
and brown has the most on it. So whoever has the highest levels, so if I had a level two and a level one, but my opponent managed to get a level four spider on there, they're gonna score the points for that continent. If there's a tie, you divide the points. You're also gonna get a point for every level of creature you have on the board. So you know, if I have a level two centipede out there, I'm gonna get two points. And then you're starting with a, a pretty big deck of cards. And so each card that you don't use is going to score you points for it. So you, that's why you would say, well, why would you ever use drifting when you have ultra drifting? Because ultra drifting is two points. Mutating is three. Moving is zero. Breeding is zero. Migrating is one. You have to decide which of these cards you're going to use, which ones you'll keep for scoring at the end of the game. You add up those points. And whoever has the most points is the winner. When you play the advanced game, each of the different species will have a special card that replaces two cards in their deck. So this one lets you breed and split. This one lets you evolve and drift, sort of like combos. Also, you're going to play on the other side of the board where there's no special spots and you have to move towards the middle. Finally, each of the boards has a flip side here, which gives you extra points if you've done something on it. Each of them has like a different task that you need to accomplish. And it says like here for the beginning, you'll replace drifting in your deck with adapting. So that's how you play the advanced game. Not much more, but it does encourages more fighting in the middle and definitely has special abilities for each of the species. The components in this game are stark, I think is the best word to describe them. They're not bad. I mean, there's little wooden discs here with the stuff printed on them, and I think they look good. I mean, the spiders are a little freaky deaky. That's a spider I'm not gonna wanna see. The cards themselves, they're not tied to any species, so you can see that the lung eels cards here look exactly like everyone else. The cards are very good quality top-notch quality. Um, the tiles themselves, I don't know what I think about the tiles. On one hand, it's like, ooh, wow, they're different colors, that's cool, but they don't mean anything, and I think that's a little confusing to people sometimes. Also, moving them around, drifting them on the board, is not particularly easy to do. So the game is fine, the rules explain stuff, it's just a little, I find it to be a little bland, I think is the strongest word I can say. So here's the deal with drifting lands. Yes, science. Yes, species. Continental drift. But there's very popular games out there. One in particular called Hey, That's My Fish. In this game, your penguins running around trying to split up pieces as you break up the ice flow to grab each other's fish. It's a silly but interesting strategic tactical movement game. This is very similar to that. But Drifting Lands is taking itself way more seriously. I think that's actually a small point against the game is it just feels like it's a stuffy history teacher here saying, whoa, hello. And you're like, all right, dude, we just want to have some fun. And that's kind of where we're at here. Now, that being said, the game is not bad. There's some interesting choices to be made here. I want to be really clear that this is a game that's going to be straight out mean towards other players. You are splitting their continent up. You are making a volcano come out right where their strongest creature is. You're trying to take over the thing. There's area control. And if you play the advanced game, it gets even meaner. That being said, you are literally making 16, well, I guess you move a continent once each round. So you're making 20 choices over the course of the game. Many of those choices are going to feel fairly mundane. I gave birth to a new lizard. I've upgraded this level 2 spider to a level 3 spider. The splitting and the drifting actions are the most exciting things, and even they're not particularly exciting. So in many ways, this plays like, hey, that's my fish, and other games where you move things around but at a much more glacial pace, haha. -ha. Now, that being said, I like the idea. I'll only play this with the advanced game because I want to have a little bit differential from everybody else. I think the idea of the cards you don't play being worth points and keeping your creatures alive at all costs being worth points and area control now worth points. It's solid. This game is fine. It's dependable. It does its job. I just don't know how particularly fun it is because I enjoy it 
And I don't need every game to be a raucous, hee hoo hoo ha ha laughter game. That does sound a little bit odd, that kind of laughter. But I don't need every game to be laugh out loud silly and funny. But this one feels like it's missing just a twinge of that fun. Yes, I'm moving some stuff around, but this isn't some big heavy strategic game. But it's also not a light game. It's falling into some weird mix up. And it's possible for one person just to have their stuff blown away by the other players. If player A and player B decide they don't like player V, I'm kind of in trouble and there's not a lot I can do to combat that. Alliances don't really make any sense in this game. So there's a lot of good, dependable, interesting systems here, but all of this combined with a box cover that isn't particularly going to grab people. When you look at the back of the box, that doesn't grab you. When I set the game up, it doesn't grab you. And that's a bunch of things working against it. So interesting ideas that are solidly executed. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there and this kind of doesn't rise above that to become anything more interesting. That being said, I'll keep an eye on this designer look forward to what they're gonna try next. I'd like to see something maybe a little less stodgy and more exciting, but that is Drifting Lands. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time on the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, interesting, but I think I'm done with it.